Confederate States of America. When Sarah Emma Edmonds was a girl, an old peddler once stayed at their family farm in New Brunswick. She wasn't a big reader other than the Bible, but he thrust a book into her hands as he left, thinking it was right for her. The book was Fanny Campbell, Pirate Queen, and it blew her mind. Her home life was rough. Her dad wanted sons to work the field, and so Sarah was a disappointment. He also had fits of rage and left the whole family feeling demoralized under his presence. At the age of 15, he arranged her to be married to an old widower who watched her a little too closely when she would work in the fields. She decided to live out the Fanny Campbell story. She cut her hair, dressed in men's clothing, and ran away from home. She ended up in Michigan, taking on the name Franklin or Frank Thompson. Frank was a Bible salesman and made pretty decent money. He even took women on dates to keep up appearances, although the night always ended with a classy kiss on the hand like a real gentleman. When the Civil War started, Edmund said that God wanted her to fight and preserve the Union, so she joined the 2nd Michigan Volunteer Infantry. At the initial examination, she was worried that the doctor would discover her secret. He even spent a lot of time scrutinizing her hands and asked her what line of work would give her such soft skin. She said education, which was true, and that was it. That was all it took and all the examination they needed because the Union needed men to fight. Despite the fact that her comrades jokingly called her our woman, she remained hidden. Go to the woods to go to the bathroom, wear extra clothing at all times, even to bed, and make sure not to help soldiers with any task that could look domestic, and Edmonds actually pulled it off. While her unit was at many famous battles like the First and Second Bull Run, Fair Oaks, McClellan's Peninsular Campaign, Fredericksburg, Edmonds gravitated towards working in the hospital and nursing, believing that she had the healing touch and soothing hands. It was during this time that she met Jerome Robbins. Robbins was also religious and the two became friends. Best friends. Like, they napped together on a couch one time friends. Jerome was suspicious of Frank, writing in his journal that a mystery seems connected with him, hard to name. And, though foolish as it may seem, a mystery appears to be connected with him which is impossible for me to fathom. Despite all of these red flags, one night he was regaling Frank with tales of his girl at home and Edmonds knew she had to tell him. While they were alone, she told him that she was a woman and she had feelings for him. Despite his own journal writings about a mystery, this shocked him and their friendship was shaken, but he never gave up her secret. After her time at the hospital with Jerome, Sarah went on to be a courier. One of the adventures she had while delivering messages was stopping at a Confederate sympathizer's house for some food. She asked the lady if she had anything to spare, and the woman was like taking a suspiciously long time, saying, yeah, yeah, hold on, just a second, I'm gonna go get the boys, we're gonna get you some good stuff. Sarah sensed that something was off, and rode away. As she looked behind her, the lady actually took shots at her with a rifle. Sarah not only didn't keep running, but she turned around, pulled a pistol, shot the woman in the arm, and then subdued her. While still acting as a courier, Sarah was given a chance to apply for an assignment as a Union spy, and she jumped at the chance. After the doctor felt her head for an unreasonably long time, he decided that she was sufficiently capable of deceit and gave her the green light. Nobody must have noticed the irony. She was able to sneak behind Confederate lines dressed as a male slave named Ned. That's right, we now have Sarah pretending to be Frank, pretending to be Ned. I know who I am! I'm a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude! She successfully infiltrated a group of slaves held by the Confederates and took detailed notes about cannons and troop movements and Confederate plans in general. After a few days, her disguise started wearing off, and while she joked it off that her mother was white, she did have to flee back to Union lines before she was discovered. Edmonds went back multiple times to spy, including in disguises such as a slave woman and even an Irish peddler lady, which a lot of Union officers thought she pulled off just a little too well. While pretending to be a man from Kentucky, she had a very close call. A Confederate cavalry officer actually attempted to conscript her, and by gunpoint made her march with his unit. While they were out doing reconnaissance, a Union group actually came upon them, and when they were ordered to charge at the Union soldiers, Edmonds actually turned around, drew her pistol, and fired right into the face of the cavalry officer. Although she was able to withstand being thrown off a mule while being a courier, she eventually contracted malaria, and that was the end of her career. She realized that two doctors had already examined her closely, and she didn't think she could pull it off a third time. 
She deserted and went to a private hospital with the intent of coming back, but unfortunately by then, Frank had been declared a deserter. Instead of fully shirking her duty, Edmonds continued for the rest of the war as a nurse acting as a woman. Sarah's post-war years were a mixed bag. She never ended up with Jerome Robbins, but she did meet a man named Linus Seeley, who ended up being good to her. But unfortunately, they didn't have any children who survived past infancy or early childhood. Sarah published her story about being a nurse, a spy, and a soldier. Although we now know that some of it is most likely fictional since she couldn't have been in multiple places at once, she was able to sell tens and hundreds of thousands of copies and get her story out there. We do know that she was at enough places with enough witnesses that she was actually able to successfully petition the Union Army for a pension, which she argued that she needed because unfortunately she suffered from ill health after contracting malaria. Sarah Emma Edmonds died at the age of 56. During that time, she had lived out both Milan and Tropic Thunder. She had taken on the persona of Frank Thompson and fought for her country, and then as Frank Thompson, put on multiple disguises, some coming really close to her real experience. In 1992, she was officially inducted into Michigan's Women's Hall of Fame. Thank you guys for watching. I really hope you enjoyed learning about this fiction becoming fact. There were many women who fought in the Civil War, and if you believe Sarah, she actually bumped into a few of them. If you guys want to hear more Civil War stories, or you like the extra editing in this video and whatnot, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe so that I know what you want to see in the future. Remember, there's going to be at least one history video every month, and then War Game Wednesday every week. Thank you guys so much, and stay excited about history.